Hello everybody, I'm Satori Shakur. Welcome to Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove, where Detroit's talented artists take the stage and share insights into their performances. This episode is curated by Detroit great Michelle May, who among the many other things she does, organizes the Boston Edison and Indian Village neighborhood concerts. We'll hear all about it from Michelle and the top-notch artists she's brought with her. All ahead on Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Erb Family Foundation, Gregory Haynes and Richard Sonenklar, the Kresge Foundation, the A. Paul and Carol C. Scott Foundation, the Michigan Arts and Culture Council, the National Endowment for the Arts, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove. It's my absolute pleasure to be sitting here with Michelle May, who curated today's episode. Hi, Michelle. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Yes, you are a force in the city. Oh, well, thank you very much. I try. <laughs> yeah, well, you brought great musicians today, and they're very eclectic, yes. different styles of music. Yes. So is this part of your enjoyment, different styles of music, or they were just so outstanding? Absolutely. So that is, I was very intentional about who I picked, and part of it was because my own musical playlist is very eclectic. I listen to literally some of everything. And I really wanted this to represent who I am as a musician and also my own interest in music. So first we have Ron English. So Ron English is a master jazz musician, jazz guitarist. He's a veteran of the, the industry. He's very knowledgeable about jazz history. And he's also a wonderful teacher too. And so he's just really, really amazing. And he really is very much steeped in making sure that people know about the music, especially younger people too. Um, so I'm very, very happy to have him on. Julianne Ankley, contemporary country music, her music is just so warm and soulful, and the messages in her music are so uplifting. She's a master storyteller with her lyrics, and you know, country music is about the storytelling. And so she really resonates with me as a woman and making sure that when she speaks and when you see her perform, that you're having all the emotions. And so she's really awesome, award-winning, very much glad to have her here. The musicians that you curated today, are they part of the Boston Edison series or do you book other places? Absolutely, so um, th they have been and they will be. Um, I, in addition to the two neighborhoods that I uh, you know, curate concerts for, I'm also the music curator for The Congregation, which is a wonderful, former church that was um, renovated and is now a coffee house and community space and is absolutely awesome. I've had Ron English, he has been at the, the congregation a couple of times. And then uh, Julianne Ankley, I had her on the Boston Edison twice. And so again, you know, Detroit is so rich in our artistry and musicianship. And, you know, I have a, a wide pool to choose from. And it's not just within Detroit, it's Detroit and surrounding areas. So I never had a lack for musicians for those. Thank you so much for curating this episode. So now we're gonna head to the stage and see our first phenomenal performance. <laughs> Thank you. 
We are back from that extraordinary performance by Ron English. Hi, Ron. Hi. Hi, Satori. So what were the two songs that uh, you played? One was an original, I know. Right. The, the first one we did was the old, the old uh, spiritual, uh, I Know It Was the Blood. It has a great deal of personal significance to me. And it's just something I've always liked from when I, I think I first heard it at uh, St. Paul AME Zion on Dexter uh, with my wife's family's church. And the second one was a piece of mine, a jazz waltz titled Meadowlark. I always find something new to play in it. And even though I wrote several decades ago, I mean several decades ago, <laughs> and I still find uh, uh, new things uh, to improvise on in it. And how did you get started in music? Uh, my father was a guitar teacher, and uh, he wisely did not really teach me himself. He, he had some, uh, he had a, a studio, and he employed a couple of other teachers, and he sent me to someone else for the first two years. And then I got in a little group playing square dance music and old swing tunes and every kind of music with uh, two guitars and uh, bass. And a, and a steel guitar. And uh, I'm of a generation that remembers the excitement of bebop jazz. Okay. And, uh, and I remember, uh, I think I was in about the 10th grade when Charlie Parker, Bird, died. And uh, you know, I didn't have any uh, real sense of, of, of what that meant, but just knew that, boy, these records were cool. And, you know, later on, I got a more appreciation for, for popular music as I got involved with Motown. Uh, you know, also hearing a, a blues on the Clear Channel station from Nashville, WLAC. Thank you so much, Mr. English. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and we're going to head right back to the stage to see another extraordinary performance. On the shore is a beacon of crumbling bricks and faded white. Stormy nights when the fog rolls in, you can see it's eerie light. And if I were alive right now, I'd be so tired of climbing these stairs to my eternal mission call. And if it wasn't for the night I took your secrets to my grave, wouldn't be here at all. Well, I guess you were bigger than the strength I had to live. Twisted lies, all dressed up in kindness. What you told my next of kin. And if I were alive right now, I'd be so tired of climbing these stairs to my eternal mission call and if it wasn't for the night I took your secrets to my grave I wouldn't be here at all oh, 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 yeah. Every way to the shore and every night I climb this tower to shine the light forevermore you'll hear my cry forevermore and if I were alive right now I'd be so Tired of climbing these stairs to my eternal mission call. And if it wasn't for the night I took your secret 
next to my grave wouldn't be here at all mm. sunrise or red sunset is it the thought of a blue-eyed boy that you haven't met yet is it a summer's kiss tell me what you wish is it holding on to a dream long after your friends say quit dance, yeah. Is it a girl's night out or a girl's night in? It's gonna take to make you stay up late to let the fun begin. We are back from the stage with Julianne Ankley. How are you, Julianne? I'm well, thank you. It's great to be here. So how did you get started in music? Oh, gosh. Um, it's kind of a, a funny story. I didn't start uh, right away. I would sing everywhere I went as a child, um, everywhere. In fact, I had three brothers that would tell me to be quiet <laughs> because I was making too much noise all the time. But I didn't pursue a music career until a little later in life. So probably in my 30s. And can you just describe the kind of music that you make? Well, it's always been difficult to put into a category. Um, it's somewhere in between Americana, singer, songwriter, country, pop, rock, all of those things. Okay, and, and do you write your own music? I do, I do. I've put a couple different covers on my um, albums over the years, but probably 99% of the songs on my albums, I either written as a solo write or co-written. So what, what songs are we hearing from you today? So today I just released a music video for the first song that I performed over in the theater and that's called The Ghost of the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, which is a lighthouse in Port Huron, Michigan. It's the oldest lighthouse in Michigan, it was built in 1836 and still standing, still functional today. And um, there's always been lots and lots of rumors about ghosts in the <laughs> lighthouse. And I was at a songwriting retreat in like 2011, and I was asked to 
write a song about the ghost of the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse. And I released it on my last album, and the album went on to win the Detroit Music Award for Outstanding Country Album. There's a brand new song that I just played here for the first time. Um, the song is called What Makes You Dance, and I wrote it and recorded it in Nashville, Tennessee. I wrote it with um, a fellow by the name of Craig Eck. We'd been friends for a few years and tried, decided to see what we could do in the writing world. And it's a really fun, upbeat, happy song that just talks about finding that thing that makes you happy, makes you dance. Thank you so much, Julianne. It was a pleasure speaking with you and listening to your beautiful music. Thank you. And thank you for joining us at Detroit Performs Live from Mary Grove. And we'll see you next time. Funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the Fred A. and Barbara M. Erb Family Foundation, Gregory Haynes and Richard Sonenklar, the Kresge Foundation, the A. Paul and Carol C. Scott Foundation, the Michigan Arts and Culture Council, the National Endowment for the Arts, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.